Hi, my name is Pastor Jack Hughes of Anchor Bible Church, and I want to show you how to use Logos Bible Software text flow diagram feature. When I have my quiet times and when I'm preparing sermons, I love to take a text, break it down so I can visually see the inspired emphasis of the text. I want to show you how to do that, and I hope it's a blessing to you and helps you study God's Word more accurately. In the context here, we are told that Ezra journeys from Babylon to Jerusalem, and this is uh, the names of some of the people who um, went up with Ezra, names you could name your kids with. Uh, he is described as a scribe skilled in the law of Moses, which the Lord God had given, and that the king granted him all he requested and the reason why, because the hand of the Lord God, his God was upon him. We then go down and we discover that he's able to go up from Babylon to Jerusalem because the good hand of his God was upon him. Twice, notice in this near preceding context of verse 10, which is going to be the text we're going to look at, it says the good hand of his God was upon him. And this, this little word for here is giving us the reason why the good hand of the Lord his God was upon him. So that's what we're going to look at this verse and find out how we too can have God's blessing on our life, just like Ezra had on his life. So we go to tools. We scroll down a little bit and you'll see sentence diagrammer. This brings up this window. We are going to now title uh, the name of our diagram. So we're just going to call it Ezra 710 test. And I click on this little crayon. It locks it in. You can click on it again. Um, and change it if you want. Insert passage right here. Notice this is where you put the passage in. We'll do that in a second. This is the Bible version. You can change it to whatever one you want. I think I only have about 50 different versions. It's really a bummer. But uh, here you have the Bible version, and then you have two options here, text flow diagram or line diagram. If you select line diagram, it will be more of a formal line diagram and allows you to put all the stilts in if you're really into you know, the stilts. I don't really care about this stuff. I just want to make sure I can see um, with my eyes the emphasis of the text, what modifies what, the main point, the verbs, things like that. So I like text flow diagramming because it just does in a sequence and shows what is subordinate to the thing before it kind of like a normal outline. So let's put our text in here, Ezra, oops, Ezra 7.10. There it is. You can select this, the drop down. And as soon as you do that, it gives you some options here. I just keep it on manuscript. There's these different ones here, but manuscript works fine. I'm going to insert the text. It just takes a second and then it populates it, inserts it in. So now we have this, our text inside of the workspace. And you'll see here there's page, you can set margins and um, display. It has different things there. You have um, text options, uh, line options, um, and a few other things. But I don't mess with those. I just take this, uh, as soon as you hover over it, you see this little bar appears, the margin bar. I just drag this out. I never print mine, so it doesn't matter. So what I want to do is I want to drag this into kind of order of priority. That is, I want the main things towards this margin and the things that modify them a little bit farther to the right and the things that modify them further to the right and the things that modify them further to the right still. Just like an outline where you have your main points, sub points, sub sub points, sub 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 points, and that's how the text flow diagram is designed to work. So Ezra is the person, place, or thing, the subject of the sentence uh, who is being talked about. And then what he did is he had set. He had set. This is the action word or the verb. And then what he set was his heart. And how he set his heart is broken up here into three distinct different um, things. To study the law of the Lord is one way he set his heart. 
and to practice it or obey it, and finally, to teach it. Teach what? His, that is the Lord's, statutes and ordinances. Probably should move this over here a little bit. I'm just dragging these around. It's quite easy to hold the, oh, I'm using a track plat pad and a Mac. I just drag it around and there you have it. So I have this right here, very simple layout. You can see how Ezra set his heart to study, to practice, and to teach. And what did he study, practice, and teach? The law of the Lord, it, statutes, and ordinances. And where did he do it? In Israel. So there you have it. So after I get the text kind of drug around into its normal sequence, and by the way, if it's a bigger text and it starts getting too far to the right, then I drag it back and I use one of these little guys here. And I, after I put my lines, I take this and drag this over and start over to this because I want to try and keep it within a square um, rather than have it run off the page. So if anything's highlighted like that line, I can just hit the, the backspace button, delete it, and it's gone. But let's color this up. So first I want to cover color all my verbs. Now if you just click on one thing, it'll highlight it. And if you want to highlight more than one thing, one more than one word or item or a comment, um, you can hold down the command key, headset, to study, to practice, to teach, and they're all highlighted. Once they're highlighted, go up to text, bold, red. I like to do all my verbs and red so I can see kind of the action. I like to do the Lord in blue of the Lord and his. This is his, this refers to the Lord. I'm going to do those bold blue. Then we have the law. I'm holding down the command key, statutes, ordinances, it. All of these highlighted things represent God's word, God's law. Go up here, bold. We'll do purple. Then Ezra. Let's make him dark green, bold. And again, you can do any colors you want. <laughs> This is just a personal preference thing. And then the location in Israel. Let's get this. We'll do this light green. There you go. Now all I have is these conjunctions. For, and, 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 text, bold, brown. Done. Okay. Now we're ready to put our lines in. And again, you can you can adjust all this anytime you want. And this is the line feature. So when I click on that, I can draw a line. Just drag and pull, and you can do that. I'm going to hit backspace and delete that. When the when you delete it, it goes back to arrow by default. When the arrow is selected, you'll see that it's green. Green. This is the line style right now. And you can change this to any of these three styles: either dashed, dotted and three different weights and all these different colors. So I like mine solid, medium weight, green. You can do any color you want. Um, it's a matter of preference. Now, once I selected my line, what I want it to look like, I can then go over to the line uh, feature. And once it's selected, I can start dragging my lines around. And this is, this. there you go. I'm going to put some different lines in here real quick, and uh, I'll try and do this fast. So I do this a lot, so I may look at a may may look a little easier than um, <laughs> if you try it, but you'll get good at it. I mean, I do it. I just like I love making text. I I don't I do lines for other people rather than for myself, just because when I'm teaching guys or discipling guys, I want to make sure that they kind of see it very clearly and uh, and so I post them on Twitter and Facebook and people like to you know see it look all pretty so that's why I do it this way so you can see how I'm just dragging things around I'll show you how to ma manipulate these lines if you make a mistake and how to deal with that all right 
So I put my lines in. I'm going to hit the arrow here. Notice this in here is overshot a little bit. I don't like that, so let's just bring this down to the middle of the line. There we go. And uh, that's it. So let's say I wanted to, you know, adjust this right here. Let's say this was, you know, I accidentally drew it like that, and I didn't like that. You go and notice when I hover over it, see this white dot? That white dot allows me to just move this line only. There you go. Now, if I want to move this, see the dot appears when I hover over it? I can drag it out of here. I can put it back in. All right. Now, if I just try to grab the middle of the line and drag it out, uh-oh, I don't want that to happen. So I put it back in, and then it's like, oh, it's still kind of overshot a little bit. And anyways, I got to fiddle with it. But that's why you grab the white part. Whenever you want to grab a whole item, you can just grab the white dot, and it's fine. But when you put something near something else, it kind of fuses to it. It snaps and kind of connects the two, and it's just a little feature that helps things um, work a little bit quicker. And so if I were to have this right here and highlight the, the you know, Ezra 710 or whatever, and, and highlight this piece right here, and then I just wanted to move it, watch what happens. Whoops, I see it, I was like, uh-oh, there we go, and there you go. Okay, see, I can, if I if I put on the, the white dot, it's fine, but what if I don't? What if I don't grab the white dot? What if I just grab this? You say, oh no, <laughs> everything's broken. You can just hit Command Z, and it goes back. Just make sure you grab the white dot, and then you can separate things quite easily. But if you don't grab the white dot, then it will, whatever it's, fused to will go with it. And again, you can go backwards using Command Z, which will undo what you did. So there you have it. Now, if I want to put a comment in here, so let's say I have a select text here. I like to put my comments in brackets just so people know that it's not, you know, in the inspired part. So Ezra, um, uh, what Ezra? Um, did. Okay, I'll just do that for fun. It's kind of lame, but anyways, I can do this right here and, and change this into whatever I want. And I'll put this here and say, well, let's say I want to put a little arrow, grab an arrow, click on it, pull it, click on it again, and then you can move it around. See that? Any direction you want. So I want to fuse this to this comment. And as soon as I do, you see that little white dot? Now, if I grab the middle of this arrow, everything's going to move. But if I want to just move the arrow, I can grab the dot, and it'll disconnect it. And now I want to straighten it up, put it up here. There you go. I want this in italics, so I highlight it. It's the only thing highlighted. Come up to text, hit italics right there. Now it's italicized. I want this to be dotted, so it's just kind of a pointer line. So I'm going to do fine dot, uh, lightest weight, black. See that? Then I can go ahead and put as many of those in the text as I want, describing what's going on here. And uh, let's say I want to do a title up here. Click on text, put this in. Let's say I don't have enough room here and I want more room, okay? Well, if I click on this, this, this right here, the Ezra 710 part, and I do Command A, it's, notice it highlights everything. Once everything's highlighted, you can move everything around. See how everything moves? And I could give myself more room at the top if I wanted to make some comments about context or whatever, but that's how you move everything. Command A, you can move everything around. Once I get that done, I'm back here to the text. We'll insert the title, cap locks, uh, how to have God's blessing on your life. There you go. I'm going to fuse this to my Ezra reference, and I'm going to drag this over. But I'm thinking, OK, I want to just highlight this only. So that's the only thing highlighted. Go up to text. I'm going to do 16 point. And I like to do copper plate 
because I don't know it's what I started doing and I've never changed so that's kind of my thing so how to have God's blessing on your life there you go you can drag it and now you're set so I could put more comments here and I'll show you what it looks like let me do a previously made one from Ezra 7:10, and you can see from this example here I've put in all these things to show different parts. So let's just go through this. The thing being talked about, the subject is Ezra. What the thing being talked about did, the verb. What uh, the, his heart is what Ezra set or fixed into place. If you do a little Hebrew word study, you'll see that's from the word set. Um, and then you have the object of Ezra's heart, heart's life focus is the law of the Lord, it his statutes, his ordinances. And then you have three ways Ezra set his heart to study, to practice, and teach. And then where he did this, what he taught is his statutes and ordinances, and where he taught it, the geographical location, is in Israel. So if you want to make a sermon outline, it's a very simple little sermon outline. Um, Set your heart to study God's Word. Set your heart to practice God's Word. Set your heart to teach God's Word. And if you do that, You'll have God's blessing on your life. So that's uh, how to do the text flow diagram feature using Lagos Bible Software version 8. And I hope that was helpful.